Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. This is Wednesday, April 10th, and today's lesson is entitled, Compassion Stronger Than Anger. The memory text again is found in Hosea chapter 12, verse 6, and it reads, But you must return to your God, maintain love and justice, and wait for your God always. Today we're going to continue the metaphor of God being a father to Israel. Uh, this relationship creates in the heart of God an incredible dilemma, a conflict that not too many people understand. The devil works very hard to uh, make men conceive of God as having a heart of stone, indifferent to the way uh, we suffer on a daily basis. But this verse clearly reveals to us that God is keenly affected by our decisions, and he suffers in a way that is not appreciated. And I would like to uh, just ask you to try to feel God's emotional conflict as we go through these verses. Uh, this is Hosea chapter 11, verse 8 and 9. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I surrender you, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart is turned over within me. All my compassion are kindled. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again. For I am God and not man. The Holy One in your midst. And I will not come in wrath. Here we see the incredible conflict going on in the heart of God because he stands as a judge and before him is presented his son guilty of the vilest sins uh, crimes worthy of death the sins that were committed in Israel even surpassed those that were witnessed in Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities that were destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah included Adma and Zeboim and here God is saying, how can I allow you to go down the same fate as Adma and Zeboim? I cannot see it. I will not witness it. I am God and my will will be respected. And he says, I choose not to destroy but to rebuild. And he's crying out to Israel to accept him. He is not a vengeful God. He is not a God that is resentful or lets his anger control his decisions. He has chosen to be merciful, but it's God's people that chooses to be resentful and turn away from him. The devil has worked a incredible PR campaign against God that has worked well in the minds of many men, including Christians. I would like to read a couple verses that just clarifies God's position in respect to sinners and his children. Uh, beginning with verse uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then we have 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we must that we might die to sins and live for righteousness galatians 3:13 christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole these texts prove without a shadow of a doubt that god uh when hell comes it will be hell for him because he has done all within his power to choose life for his children in so much he gave himself up on the cross of judgment to take the place of his sinful children but just to to give them the opportunity i i, I noticed that in in first peter the the word might he did this that they might have the opportunity and it's not because God would choose otherwise, but because his children would not accept 
the sacrifice, would not accept the invitation. In order for any one of us to go to hell, for any one of us to suffer destruction, we must walk past the broken body of God. We must disregard Him and divorce Him as husband and as father and leave life behind. As we go throughout our duties today, I would challenge you to take a moment and just reflect on what has been done for you. The incredible sacrifice that is unparalleled in the history of the universe. Just to give you the opportunity to live a life with God. Uh, I will challenge you to give Him a uh, thankful praise and appreciate the wonderful opportunity given to you. And realize what's at stake if you choose to disregard God's law. Yes, you will lose uh, everything, but God will lose you too. And He's the one that did more for your salvation than you could ever do for yourself. So let's cut God a break and finally give Him what He wants, which is a relationship with you and me. Thanks for joining us today. These lessons have been a very uh, balancing uh, force in my mind and my emotions. And I hope it's been the same for you. Uh, I thank you for joining us and uh, participating, supporting us with your comments. I wish that God would give you a blessed day. Have a wonderful today, and I will see you tomorrow.